Great, thank you everyone. And before I start, thanks again to our great hosts, Protocol Labs, for convening us here today. This has been very heartening to hear from everyone. We all are, have our hearts in the same place, clearly. And I love to see how our community is so strong that you know, uh, there's multiple people who've worked together at Energy Web and are now on other teams and uh, in different uh, across this space, uh, and we're all doing such great work. My name is Wendell Cathcart. I lead the delivery of some of our projects at Energy Web that focus on decarbonizing the crypto space, and uh, I'm helping. Um, sorry, today I'm excited to talk about Green Proofs, uh, our solution stack for. Uh, advancing some of the components of the disclosure space today, uh, ESG, uh, and also uh, the proving of these individual uh, credentials as they exist. So just a few sentences on who we are and how, kind of how we've gotten here. So Energy Web is a global nonprofit company that builds open source software for some of the largest energy companies in the world to help decarbonize. And a key comp component of the Energy Web stack itself is the public Energy Web blockchain. So that clearly puts us at this nexus between uh, the crypto and the sustainability space that we leaned into very firmly uh, about this time last year with the launch of the CCA. So this is something that uh, Doug, who spoke earlier, was uh, crucial to uh, launching CCA. And uh, there are multiple members uh, of the CCA uh, in present today. So it's a really uh, great thing to see everyone get to meet some people in person. CCA is a Paris-style accord uh, from the industry itself to help uh, make crypto more sustainable and go carbon neutral. Uh, so there are over 250 supporters of the CCA, and about half of them have signed on as signatories who have pledged to go carbon neutral with their Energy, the electricity consumption um, by 2030, which is you know, a really aggressive goal. And we are seeing a lot of opportunities to lead not just the crypto space and going carbon neutral and carbon negative, but also setting an example for how we can, uh, so how other energy intensive industries uh, can follow suit and not just you know, uh, lead uh, from the industry on how to go in this, this direction, but also to prove using some underlying uh, unique technologies and uh, blockchain native approaches. So, you know, this 2030 goal is aggressive and it's actually, frankly, pretty difficult. Uh, so this is a, you know, crypto specifically uh, is a space where the term uh, and definition for what it means to be sustainable or carbon neutral is actually not as clear cut as you would think, and there aren't necessarily <clears throat> universal standards for what this means. So I'm not trying to pick on uh, the CCA uh, signatories or uh, the crypto space specifically. This is actually a more general challenge. Meeting and proving climate uh, progress it is tough. And a lot of it has to do with those fundamental definitions for what is sustainable. Uh, what does it mean 2022? What does it mean in 2030? Uh, what are those kind of pathways? Uh, what do they mean? This is prohibitive for many companies because of this ambiguity. There's high costs and complexity to uh, complying with uh, sustainability in the crypto space. And as I mentioned, you know, this goes beyond crypto. So there's a good opportunity for leadership here. And then there's a fundamental information asymmetry that is present in the crypto or the sustainability disclosures that companies make. So. You know, oftentimes these are PDFs on websites that you know serve a purpose. They're important uh, to an extent, but then there's uh, the public is missing fundamental verifiability of what it is. Uh, you know, at the base here, what is it that uh, you know the process that was undergone by you know oftentimes consultants in uh, collaboration with the company to prove and say these things. And so uh, you know, we think that this is a trust don't verify process, generally speaking, these days. And you know, I think you can see wh where I'm going uh, with this. Uh, you know, this is Web3 tech, Web3 mantra, verify, don't trust. And, and so that's really where we're headed with the green proofs uh, approach at Energy Web. So green proofs, generally speaking, is a, a technology stack that enables uh, industry players um, in, you know, in crypto and in other industries to be able to prove the sourcing and sustainability of their energy procurement uh, using uh, self-sovereign digital identities, SSI and DIDs, or the kind of SSI speak for what I'm describing here, uh, to be able to 
make claims and prove uh, in, uh, in a verifiable, by the public way, their operations. And we see uh, two major approaches to like, the challenges that I just described. So this is to empower the industry uh, themselves uh, to uh, define sustainability and to have a governance scheme moving forward. So you know, what does sustainability mean in 2022 for a crypto sector? What does it mean uh, in, in five years? Uh, should this be a dynamic and self-governing approach that, that allows this uh, you know, certification, for lack of a better term, roll with the punches and change as needed? And is this a way that the, uh, the industry itself can self-regulate in a verifiable way that uh, is inherent trust and, trust and trustworthiness? So these clearer definitions for what it means to be sustainable, lower cost, complexity, can uh, result in broader uh, uptake in an industry and progress in an industry. And then this governance itself can be actually uh, defined at the industry level, but actually can map down to the companies themselves. So individual green proofs about a company's uh, procurement practices will actually map to uh, the industry-wide standard. And then um, we see crypto is a fantastic incubator for this type of approach. So cryptocurrency miners have hashes, have blocks, have things that are inherently verifiable uh, and tie into energy consumption as some of the previous speakers have discussed today. There's also uh, these, uh, you know, they're forward thinking, cutting edge technology companies, blockchain native, and they actually, uh, you know, are, are, are motivated uh, to make changes here. But as I mentioned, the green proofs approach is generic enough to apply to other uh, uh, industries as well. And then back to those um, ver verifiable um, reports, so, you know, the PDFs in today's uh, paradigm. So we are taking a Web3 approach to the, uh, the, the, the idea and the technology behind disclosures uh, in this space. The public is a key stakeholder. Uh, everything should be verifiable, um, public key based uh, signatures, uh, clear governance. <clears throat> that should be uh, consumable by the, the public. And uh, how we get there is with trust primitives. Uh, this is you know, the underlying decentralized uh, self-sovereign identities that are making claims about the company. Uh, these could be different business units. They could be employees. They could be devices on the edge. They could be third-party auditors and uh, sources of, of information. So you know, we're really trying to meet the industry and the companies uh, where they are. You know, this isn't trying to ask companies to go uh, uh, so far beyond their comfort zone. And what results from this approach is a bottom-up and privacy-compatible way of showing progress for a whole industry. So, you know, if you have multiple companies that are in the mining sector that have proven their sustainability and their adherence to certain standards, then you can actually add that up and show real progress um, at the industry level. But again, we're not asking for private information that shouldn't be disclosed to be disclosed. So I'll get back uh, into uh, maybe illustrating how Green Proofs works conceptually by talking about trust and a, give a really uh, simple example of a trust triangle that some people have actually probably already done today, maybe multiple times today. So this is the latte uh, example. How do you start with a credit card and end up with a latte in your hand? That credit card is issued to you by your bank. It's physical. It goes into your wallet. And you present it to, let's say, a barista at a point of sale. And <clears throat> it doesn't end there. The barista verifies your uh, credit card information using a protocol. And then you receive a good or service. And so there's actually quite a lot of trust that went into this process. And it was transitive. So you received a latte because of your bank issued you a credential. There's so much behind the scenes here that you know, I, I don't and can't really get into because of just the immensity to it. There's a huge centralized network of organizations, government entities, banking, uh, banking uh, organizations, and then uh, regulations and the court system behind them. But this is all the governance layer that took part in this trust triangle that uh, enabled you to have this very smooth uh, user experience of buying uh, a latte. So I'm going to generalize how disclosures work today, generalization. 
and how there's a trust gap that emerged because of the fundamental design here. Um, so just starting again on the left, we're, we have a consulting company generally that was hired, uh, commissioned to create a report about a company about their um, sustainability, the procurement of renewables. And you know, these are done by lots of uh, very smart and talented people in this space. And they uh, essentially are hired to uh, be able to say something credibly about uh, this company. So here's Acme in the center here. And what this company has done is the consultants issued them a credential. The companies actually placed this on their website to be consumed um, you know, at, at will by the public. This isn't something that they're having to display. It's just kind of on display. And the public is really left with just that PDF in their hand. They, they can't go so much beyond verifying the uh, data that went into it, the process. The, uh, there, there's a lot of lack of governance uh, in this layer here uh, because the uh, reputational, uh, you know, the reputation of the consultants and the company are really kind of on display. And there's a fair amount of change, uh, potential for impermanence in the actual underlying governance and processes uh, and even organizations involved here. So this company might be using a different company, oops, a uh, different uh, organization uh, year to year uh, to, to produce this report. So there's a real problem here, I think that it should be clear. Uh, and we have, you know, a, an approach that doesn't, that, that tries to get back to some of the assurances of the previous trust triangle but it doesn't have to reintroduce those intermediaries, these years and centuries and legacy uh, organizations that is you know, the banking uh, and credit card uh, network industries. <clears throat> so just starting with the bottom layer here and thinking about governance. So using a public utility layer like the energy web chain in this example, uh, where you know, uh, there's a, a, a censorship, censorship resistance and uh, just public access, by uh, anyone, you can embed uh, self-sovereign digital identities in an identity registry that uh, can then serve as a sort of key store. It, this is a key store by which the different parties can then uh, validate things that they've said about one another. Who are the issuers in this example? So we have, uh, you know, as I mentioned, those maybe business units, employees, and third party companies that are involved in the operations of this the company, the subject of this uh, credential. They issue information about the company uh, to, um, to the company, but it's not just like text uh, or emails. These, these are signed messages that follow credential, uh, clearly defined credentials uh, that add up to a whole. This whole is greater than the sum of its parts. These things are, uh, you can think of it as a hierarchy of claims that result in the replacement for that PDF, what we're calling a verifiable presentation. That's uh, SSI speak. And what that is to the public is a document that could be, again, published on a website. It could be accompanied by a pretty PDF. You know, there's all sorts of ways we can make this look very um, easily digested by the public, but there's fundamentally, um, just leagues more trustworthiness and verifiability in this type of verifiable presentation that's composed of these smaller claims. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we're not saying that there aren't, aren't gonna be consultants and third party data providers and these types of specialists involved. They will be involved. And this is actually gonna look different from an industry to industry, <clears throat> even company to company. But again, this similar model uh, with these credential definitions, these different roles and how they add up to a, a larger presentation, this can actually be standardized across industries and agreed on by a consortia of companies in these different industries. So here's a way where we can actually have more self-governance by industry players in a transparent way, you know, involving NGOs, involving different specialists to, to lend uh, real credibility here but without the need for, let's say, public intervention in the case of crypto and you know, all the attention it's getting right now, or um, a, a more burdensome or centralized governance process. So <clears throat> I won't get far into exactly what uh, self-sovereign identity means. Uh, I encourage everyone to, to learn about it. It's a really interesting, exciting new space that uh, we have uh, implemented some of the standards of uh, the W3C standards at Energy Web um, by our SSI team. And uh, yeah, essentially, we are 
building everything with SSI at, its, uh, at our core. It's in our DNA as a company. It's in all of our products. The Greenproof solution that I've described is an implementation of all these, these uh, technological primitives that I've uh, kind of outlined. And here we have, yeah, again, the verifiable presentations, which is that kind of some of the parts deployed for a specific industry, in this case, crypto. So uh, we uh, love to engage with uh, industry players. Uh, we would love to work with, with, any, with any one of you. Please do uh, reach out, read up on us, read up on SSI, and let us know how we can work together. <clears throat> Sure, so we actually um, have implemented the full DID uh, wallet, uh, uh, but we haven't uh, deployed it uh, yet. It's still kind of in a beta phase now. So from a technological standpoint, we are uh, on, our, on our track to, I think, in Q2 to, to open source that, have uh, essentially all the fundamentals that we need for this use case more broadly. But meanwhile, you know, we have multiple parallel business streams uh, looking at different industries, seeing how we can meet businesses, you know, where they are uh, with these needs. And so, you know, there's a whole lot. I mean, I mentioned governance a number of times. I mean, that is huge. Like, technology is one thing. It, it, it's, it's, it's hard. Governance is really hard. Uh, you know, community building, getting everyone to work together is, is tough. So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Anything else? There we go. Are your SSI or TID things really portable? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So it's actually all role based. Um, uh, currently, there's on chain roles that are, uh, you know, publicly viewable by anyone. But then there's also uh, stored on IPFS. But you could clearly use Protocol Labs. In fact, we've done a lot of uh, not Protocol Labs, Filecoin. We've done, done a lot of thought on how that would work. But, uh, but IPFS is, you know, the, the off-chain, uh, more private uh, credentials.